You will find a number of reasons to include constant values in your assembly language programs. We've already seen a few uses in the Hello World examples. The easiest way to write a number is the way we've always done it. When you write an unadorned string of digits, it's interpreted as a base 10 number. But there are times when it makes more sense to write a number in a different way. Quite often, hexadecimal makes the most sense, and there are several ways to do it. The same value can be written this way. The first character of a number must be a digit, so it's necessary to put a zero in front of the C. But the letter H following the value specifies that it is a hex number. The H can be an upper or lower case. Also, the letters inside the value can be upper or lower case. Or if you prefer, you can shape a hex value the same as you can in C by preceding it with a zero and an X. But that's not all. You can write a hex number by preceding it with a dollar sign. Because the dollar sign serves double duty, it must be followed by a digit, not a letter, so it was necessary to insert the zero in this example. You will probably just pick one way to type hex values and use that. You can also write numbers in octal. You do that by writing three octal digits, followed by an O or a Q, upper or lower case. But that's more of a curiosity than a practicality these days. And you can write a binary number with ones and zeros, followed by the letter B. Here's an odd one. You can see how strings of ones and zeros can be hard to read. Well, you can, if you wish, insert an underscore character anywhere inside any numeric constant to group the digits and make it easier to read. Another type of constant, and this is one you will use a lot, is a character string. A string can be declared using the normal double quote characters as delimiters. You can also use single quotes, which is the apostrophe character, to do the same thing. Or you can use what is known as the back quote character, which is the ASCII grave accent mark. All three of these are the same and you can use the quote character of one type inside the string created by the quote character of another type. In addition, you can use the backslash character as the escape character to include any of the quote characters as a literal inside any string. And of course, to include a backslash as a literal, it is necessary to escape it also. You can do the same thing to include a question mark. In fact, there are a number of specials that can be used to include non-printable characters. You are probably familiar with them. They're the same as the ones available in C. And you can enter any character value you wish as a value up to three octal digits by preceding it with a backslash character. You might want to note that the null byte, which is backslash zero, for a zero byte value is nothing more than a special case of an octal number. You can also represent a character as a hexadecimal number by following the backslash character with the letter X followed by two hex digits. And you can write Unicode values. Following the backslash by a lowercase u can be followed by the four hexadecimal digits of a Unicode character. Or you can enter an extended Unicode character by following the backslash with an uppercase U followed by eight hexadecimal digits. There is also something you will encounter called a character constant. These are strings that are either four or eight characters long. They're used as literals for opcodes or in expressions. For example, this instruction copies the literal 32-bit character constant into a register. Now important here is the fact that Intel reverses things so the actual content created by the assembler is reversed to DCBA so when it gets copied into the memory location it's swapped again and stored as ABCD which was the original intent. With these basics we can look into some data declarations and a few more constant types in the next lesson.